I want you all to close your eyes and imagine a world where food prices have tripled, where uh, the poor are scrambling to find places to live because the ocean has run them out of their homes, where disease, contracting diseases is a common thing because air, poly, air quality is so poor, and where hurricanes are destroying countries left and right. All of these things will be a reality unless we do something about climate change soon. Climate change is one of the biggest problems facing our world today, and we all need to unite to stand up and fight it. I'm here to tell you what climate change is, why it's happening, and what we can do to stop it. Now, to really understand climate change, first we have to understand the difference between weather and climate. So, each individual place obviously has its own weather patterns depending on how close the Earth is to the sun. Now, an individual place can be dry and um, hot in the summer, but that same place can be wet and cold in the winter. Now, along with weather, um, each individual place also has its own climate, and climate is basically what the weather, pa weather patterns are like predominantly throughout the year. So, for example, deserts are predominantly dry and hot throughout the year, whereas some mountain ranges are predominantly cold and wet throughout the year. Now, NASA says climate change is the usual weather, if, if climate change is a change in the usual weather found in a place. This could be a change in how much rain a place usually gets in a year, or it could be a change in a place's usual temperature for a month or season. Now, obviously, the Earth's climate has fluctuated since the dawn of time, um, but it's really humans that are creating this problem now. And the Earth's climate has already raised by one degree Fahrenheit. And although this doesn't seem like much, it is actually starting to cause glaciers to melt and starting to change um, plant cycles. So why is this happening? Well, the Earth's climate has obviously fluctuated for forever since the dawn of time, and it's because of natural cycles, but this time it's humans that are really causing the problem. We have been polluting the air since the Industrial Revolution with fossil fuels. And what these fossil fuels do is they go up into the atmosphere, they basically simmer, and they create a layer that pulls in the Earth's heat and doesn't let it release back into space. This is known as the greenhouse gas effect, where the gases, um, the fossil fuels basically act as um, glass from a greenhouse, and they pull in the heat, they don't let it release back into the air, and they warm up that Earth's climate. So carbon dioxide and methane are the two leading um, carbon gas emissions, and carbon dioxide alone accounts for 64% of man-made climate change, and methane trails that is 17%. Now, Canada's climate change website says, it is this human-induced enhancement of the greenhouse effect that is of concern because ongoing emissions of greenhouse gases have the potential to warm the planet to levels that have never been experienced in the history of human civilization. Such climate change could have far-reaching and or unpredictable environmental, social, and economic problems. Possibly. So how are we contributing to it? We are driving our cars around, we are taking showers that are too long, we are taking airplanes halfway across the world, we are leaving our lights on when we are not in the room. So obviously, energy production and energy use is intertwined in our everyday lives, and it's going to be difficult to get this out of our lives, or at least lower it to fix the problem of climate change. So all of the things I just mentioned earlier account for 84% of greenhouse gas emissions. So it's obvious that humans are causing this problem and it's going to be difficult to surpass this to make a change. Now, it is going to be a constant cycle towards destruction because as the Earth's temperature rises, um, we are going to put more energy into air, um, air conditioning and travel. We are, while we're using more energy, power plants are going to be way less efficient. They're going to be working to the max. They're going to require more water for the cooling process. And as temperatures rise, we're going to see an increase in water evaporation, and that's going to lose less water in the soil, less water in the earth, and plants are going to grow as well. We're going to have economic problems in this as well. So how is it affecting the rest of the world? Well, we are already seeing that glaciers and polar ice caps are melting faster than ever, and we're seeing melting in Greenland and Western Arctica, and this is accounting for eight inches of sea level rise to date. So, these eight inches might not seem like very much. However, um, global sea levels, it's predicted that global sea levels will rise over three feet by 2100. This is going to cause huge problems for especially coastal regions and island nations. And one of the regions that's going to suffer the most is the country of Bangladesh. Now, Bangladesh, basically the entire country is really flat. 
and um, basically right at sea level, sea level. And they account for only 0.3% of, um, of fossil fuel emissions. Now, they're not contributing to climate change basically at all, but they're going to reap the benefits, or sorry, reap the effects of climate change basically the worst side of every other country. It's predicted that by 2050, 17% of their land will be consumed by water. And this is going to displace 18 million people. Now, if this isn't bad enough, other island nations around the world are going to suffer. Um, places like the Maldives, Kiribati, and Fiji, they're all going to lose most of their land masses and displace thousands of people and cause huge economic global problems. So how is it affecting um, other places around the globe? We're seeing that ecosystems are moving um, towards cooler habitats. We're noticing that obviously polar reefs, coral reefs, and um, polar animals are already endangered and they're going to be on the verge of extinct. They have really little time. Uh, hurricanes are more frequent and much stronger, and this is going to obviously kill a lot of people and hurt a lot of parts of the world. And temperature rises are also even affecting human health around the world because as the temperature rises, um, there's been more deaths due to heat waves and actually more severe um, allergies due to the longer pollen season that we've been experiencing. So how is it affecting us? Well, the drought is the most obvious answer to this question. The drought um, that we've been experiencing in California has been the worst drought, one of the worst droughts in California history. This is because we've seen that we've had way less snow, way less rain, and there's a much earlier melting period. So we are basically, since climate change has been happening, it has basically been throwing off California's natural uh, water cycle. There's been way less rain. And it's leading to also less um, groundwater. And groundwater is basically just the water that's in the soil. So this is really obviously hurt plant cycles and uh, hurt our agriculture because plants are growing as well. And as the soil is drier and plants are drier, that leads to more wildfires also. And this has affected us a lot, especially in Southern California. We've seen really severe wildfires in the past few months. And we've seen the wildfire season increase from five to seven months where it is today. Lastly, one of the most obvious um, connections to climate change for us is the ocean that is basically our backboard. We see all the time, and the um, climate change that we'll experience, the rising uh, sea levels, are going to affect the beaches that we go to all the time, and it's going to affect um, basically all of Malibu. And it's the beach houses that are along the PCH and along the water, all of those will have to be located because the backboard is going to be so what can we do to solve it? Now, I'm going to propose two ways to hopefully solve this, or at least make it better. The first is called the Brayden Shanley Approach. Now, Brayden Shanley was a scientist that basically just encouraged people to consume less. And this is really easy, because all you have to do is just, you know, turn your lights off when you're not in the room, or take shorter showers, or sort and recycle your waste, and just acknowledge that what you're doing is making a difference in the rest of the world, for the rest of the world, and just awareness of the problem, awareness of what you're doing is the first step towards making a change for folks. Lastly, I'm going to ask that you sign this petition because now is one of the most important times to fight. We have just elected a president that promises to dismantle the EPA, who promises to build more um, oil pipelines, dig more coal, and pull the United States out of worldwide climate change agreements. Now, this is huge, and this isn't only going to affect the United States, but it's going to affect the rest of the world. So, if we all act and we all sign this petition that promises that we will pledge to fight against climate change, and we won't let climate change be at the back burner of our politics, it will start to make a change, and we will start to act to fixing this problem. Amazing.